Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and I've got my friend Sue on the line. I'm going to bring her on. This is going to be a lot of fun because we're in the same business, kind of, the event industry. Sue is a speaker and also an author. Let's bring her on. Sue, are you there? I'm so glad to be here, Brad. Thank you for inviting me. And her last name is Henry. Do you get, the, like, the, when you do the name backward and stuff, people think you're a guy and go, hey, you must be Henry Sue? Only on on Facebook where these people are prospecting me or, you know, they're trying to hit you up. Oh, I love your beautiful smile, Henry. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you probably don't get any of those, right? <laughs> oh, you get them all the time. I, I really like your, your profile. I'm fascinated by your life. Yeah. Anyways, where where are you living? You're up north, right? Yeah, so I am a tractor driving, cow milking, hay hauling, mom of six, glamma of six entrepreneur. So I live in southeastern Minnesota. We are organic grass only dairy farmers. I am semi retired as a speaker. I only will speak at three or four events a year anymore. And I have a thriving online business. Did you say you're a glamma? Well, yeah, I'm not a grandma. I'm a glamma, baby. Like, like, like. <laughs> Like glamping and all that kind of thing. Yeah, glamorous. You know, I mean, milk cows, but I tell you, I get my nails done. <laughs> That's right. And, and when I'm hauling hay, I'm probably one of the few women farm wives who's out there with mascara and lipstick on. But you just never know. You got to get that get that makeup on at three o'clock in the morning so you can get out <laughs> and milk those cows. I want them to look pretty for me, or I want to look pretty for them. You know. <laughs> So you're not, you're not speaking that much anymore? I am not. Um, I'm not performing much as far as magic anymore either. It's just, a, it's a grind when you can do so much more online. Well, and I think that I had been speaking so much and I pushed myself so much that um, I ended up getting sick with adrenal fatigue. And it was like for six months, I sat in a chair with no energy. It was like I was a stoner without the munchies. It was, it, you know, <laughs> not that I know what that's like, of course. <laughs> And so, and, and it would just, I had worn myself out. And so now, you know, I go to several marketing events every year and I'm huge into marketing and networking, but I'm, I'm very careful about the events that I do. I mean, if we, for your listeners, you know, you may, if you haven't spoken, you may think that getting on a stage, oh, it sounds really, really cool. But when you're at an event, say for instance, if it's a three day event, you were on the whole three days. There isn't a break. You are in that role. And and then when you take into account the flying and the hotel and the crappy food because you're eating by yourself some or you're trying to get these things done. I mean, and the meeting after meeting because people want to meet with you. It It's really a grind. The same and, questions over and over and over and over. Yeah. And I don't even mind that. It's just after so many, after so many years of doing it, my body just said no more. And, and that's where I was at. I know what you mean. Same thing happened with the performing thing, you know, because some people think, oh, it'd be cool to go on a cruise ship and do one of those cruises. And it's, no, you're stuck on a boat. It's like being in prison it's, or, or at a convention. You're at, at the hotel. You got to kind of stick there. You know, it's. Yeah. Yeah. It's a grind. It's this show business. It is. And it, and I'm, and I, it catapulted me and I had the opportunity. I mean, because of, of, of the organization I did a lot of speaking for, I mean, I got to share the stage with Jack Canfield and Brian Tracy and Lisa Nichols from The Secret. And I mean, uh, Keith, uh, Keith Ferrazzi and um, Stephen M. R. Covey, he did The Speed of Trust. Um, Bob Berg, the good, I mean, I got to meet all these incredible people and stuff. But at the end of the day, it, it just, you have nothing left. And I didn't know enough to step back and fill my own cup and learn that until, un, until I crashed and it wasn't any fun. And I don't, I don't ever want to go back there again. But you'll do a gig once in a while, right? Yeah. I, there's two or three I do a year that I love the owners and, and, and I love the energy. They're not the real, they're not the, you know, six, five or five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred people events. They're smaller events. So you get to really schmooze and get to know people That's and learn from them too, instead of being a thing up there. So that in case people do want to get a hold of you or that, because you should get another one that says Sue Henry listens, because I'll bet you do that too. <laughs> I do. I do. 
<laughs> especially if you're working other things. Because did you say that you just finished a book? Yeah, I'm. I'm actually. I'm. I'm a co-author in a another book. Um, this is the fourth one I'm in that has made the Amazon number one bestsellers and everything. It's called the Success Rituals, and there's 20 women who we we got together and we each wrote down. It, and it's all in. We all do different things, but it's a different. It's a different process we each do within that area so mine is on social media and how do you get out to be on social media and you know you want to be where your uh, your prospects are you can't be on every single thing it's just like speaking at an event you don't want to speak at every event you want to choose the events that are filled with your ideal prospects and it's the same thing when you're um when you're on social media you want to make sure that you're at the time and the place where your prospects are and that's what i talk about yeah, different platforms have different purposes in fact even different times of day have different things going on. A lot of people don't know that. They think they're all the same just because you've got a connection. You can just throw stuff out there. Well, well cool. that's why they're not being as successful. Yeah, and they get a little frustrated. And uh, they, a lot of them just, you never know how they operate because they change the way that their algorithms work. So that you need to work with somebody like you that knows what the heck going on. You know, what's the, <laughs> they, they change their algorithms. Like, you know, Janet E. Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Janet and I are good friends. Yeah. She's focused on the Facebook thing. So if, if you want to, I mean, every day she's kind of getting an update of what's new. Yeah. Facebook yeah. and Instagram. And you got to do that. Anybody that tries to spread it all out there and become a like expert at all of it, it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. Unless you've got, unless you've got VAs who are really well tuned into each one. Like I've got a VA who does my Instagram, but I do my LinkedIn and I do my Facebook because those are personal connections. Mm -hmm. Because what I do is like, I've got a free Facebook challenge I do every month on how to become an influencer in your niche. And it's about becoming a micro influencer. So you can make a really good living with a small list or a small group of followers. I'm talking like a thousand people. You don't have to have, you know, masses and masses of people. Like I've got 20,000 followers on my Facebook. That's not where you make the money. It's, it's in building those relationships with each individual. It's yeah. not mass stuff that you're throwing out there. It's, it's, it's about tapping into your heart and, and speaking from your heart not pitch slapping them, but it's also listening to what they're saying and having that conversation and stepping out there as a friend, not just as, you know, looking at everybody as an individual and a person and not just as a yeah, the, the masses of numbers, it's kind of like having a billboard on the freeway and all the cars that didn't look at the billboard when they drove by. That's a lot of the people that you, <laughs> you got to get the ones that actually look at the billboard and read it. So let me ask you a question then, Brad. When's the last time you took a number down from a billboard and you actually called it? I don't think I ever have. Sure. <laughs> so, so what's the what's the benefit? I have no idea. Just repeat, 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 repeat. And eventually you, you you learn every digit. Every time you drive to work, you you memorize the first <laughs> digit, then you memorize the second digit. Now they're listening to podcasts like yours instead. They're not even paying Absolutely. attention. The when we did the expos, we did hey, we're the expo guys, so it's easy to remember expoguys.com. Yeah, and that was yeah. on the billboard, and they saw it every time they drove to work, and it was our big mugs on the billboard that <laughs> worked. But uh, and like Dick and Rico, remember when he was all over the place, something like that. Dick and Rico's second wind exercise equipment. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So something like that can kind of work, but. I don't write down phone numbers and stuff like that. Well, yeah, I mean, and I, by the time you're 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 think, oh, I should take that number. You're past it. You can't even get a photo of it with your phone. So, so you know that again, right. I understand the importance of wanting to be out there. But what's the benefit to you? So, doesn't it make more sense instead of having this broad, huge thing to focus in on who your actual tribe is? those people who have the problem that you can solve in your own unique way and help them through the, the journey of, and transformation so they can achieve their happily ever after. Wasn't there uh, somebody that uh, wrote a book or something about 1,000 true fans or 100 true fans, something like that? Well, I don't know. I haven't heard of that. Well, my friend Ron Orr, I think, mentioned it. It's like like 100 true fa true friends or 100 true 1,000 true fans that you just need a thousand of real people, 
not just a bunch of gawkers that are kind of looking around. And yeah. it's about you know developing that relationship and that friendship and being sincere, authentic, and genuine. And then people will bond with you. And you want people to have money. But it's also <laughs> about understanding that you take that relationship and you still remain friends, but you still keep it where you can ask comfortably for the sale. You still have, you know, because I see so many people who they get into this friend zone and they don't know how to break out of it. And that's just oh, as common true. as those people who jump in or friend and pitch you. Huh? I was speaking of Facebook friends. That's different than real friends. Oh, I, well, I'm talking about people on Messenger. <laughs> the social media thing, I'm not even going to ask how old you are, but I'm 63, and this whole world of social media is just totally weird to me now. It's bizarre. It's fun. Well, it's I'm older than you are. How about that? So let's just say that, let's just say of the six kids, four of them are 40 and above, and I was not a teenager when I had kids. Okay. <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. How's that? That's why you're a glamma. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. What's this other link you showed me, the, the checklist to influencer? So, so one of the things is what I, I, my goal is to help everyone become an influencer within their niche because I believe within everyone there is a lot of greatness. But most of the time we don't open up the door to step into that greatness. It can be a hard, it can be hard. We get confused. There's all these shiny objects. So my goal is to help each person that I get to talk to. Um, figure out who their niche is and step into that person um, that can share, you know, and, and when you're stepping into this, this attractive character, which is one of the things I talk about, you're kind of like an actress or an actor playing a role and you're choosing somebody to model that has, that has the attributes that you really identify with and the values. So as you're kind of modeling your behavior based on that person, the benefit is that you turn around and it gives you confidence to reach out and ask because we should be attached to our activities, not to the answer the other person gives us. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is, is that it helps us develop who we already are inside and bring that forward so we're amplifying who we are as we become comfortable with that so that so that's one of the the beautiful things so as we become an influencer in our niche we're not just learning our voice and sharing it on a bigger platform we're able to figure out from who you know what are they thinking what what pain are they having? Why do they want the change? Why do they want this solved? And it's usually not on a surface level. It usually goes much, much deeper than that. And what question to ask and how to do it. And, and so that they can have this. And then learning what your transformation journey looks like. So you can explain it to that pe those people. It's because people don't, don't buy products or services. They buy the end product. They buy the happily ever after. Right. They buy hope that you can make the difference. So once you know how to put that in place, then all of a sudden they're going to be perking up their ears saying, okay, how does this work? How can you help me? And they'll be reaching out to you instead of you always have to reach out to them. And that's that's really, really a powerful thing. And that's one of the benefits of being an influencer. So in this checklist, what I did was I created, I, or I, I wrote it out in seven different steps that you need to take um, if you want to become an influencer in your niche. Now we're talking influencers within your niche. These are micro influencers. We're not talking Kardashian status here. Okay. Right. So we're talking where a smaller, you know, you've got a smaller following where you're truly serving them and they are so excited about what you have done for them that they continue to feed your pipeline with new people that are already pre-sold on what you do, how you do it, and the end result you offer. So that's also kind of moves into the, uh, the referral end of things where they know who you are and what you do and they're willing to endorse you and go find bird dog for you. That's right. That's right. And how powerful is that? And that's one of the benefits of becoming an influencer. And the influencer part, it's also the, the attraction marketing, like what Ann Sieg teaches, that kind of thing, the getting people to come to you rather than you chasing people. Right. But I think that, you know, attraction marketing, sometimes people, the ones that I have met, so let me just, you know, clarify that. A lot of people I have met, they get confused on attraction marketing. They think if they put out these um, curiosity posts and these things like that, it's going to be like, oh, 
hope people just come to them. But it, it, people may come to them, but you still have work to do. That's just the beginning. You need to follow up. You need to have those conversations. You need to have some kind of a process and a journey in place to take them from where they first are to asking them if they're interested in taking a look or any of those things. Yeah, I think uh, the video like this, the reason I do these is so that people can see who we are and they get to know, like, trust, and respect. And once yeah. you get that relationship, then they're much more apt to be influenced by what you have to say. But when you get all these emails that I don't know who they are, <laughs> and sometimes they're signed, the email address is different than the person they're signed off as, you're <laughs> skeptical. You don't trust them. So I don't know, I think you got to be like what we're doing now with the video and be be um, an influence. <laughs> and, I think, and I think that people have really high BS meters right now. I think that, you know, social media has been out here long enough where they've already probably bought the programs and, and seen the people and, and even probably even paid for coaching and things like that from people who promised a great work, but couldn't deliver the results. And that, you know, and so their BS meter is high. So they, they're more skeptical. So they are going to sit there and want to know more. They're going to want to look into your eyes and see, does this person seem legit? Do they seem you know, honest and, and have integrity and, and all of that and not, and, and then they'll check you out. So it's not like before where, oh, that person looks really good, ta-da, and I'm going to sign up right now. Yeah, it's, it's more of a process than that. Yeah, that's why I do these raw like this and I don't do the green screen and all that kind of stuff. This is the real deal and I'm not trying to impress you with a Lamborghini in the background or anything. I don't have one. I got a <laughs> <laughs> well, I do do some videos of me in the tractor as my, and I'll talk about that as my mobile office when I'm doing hay and stuff. And people that's do genuine, <laughs> pardon? That's genuine and unique. Well, it is genuine and unique, and uh, no Lamborghini, but what can I say? John Deere instead, right? It would, oh no, uh uh, New Holland. No John Deere's. <laughs> no John Deere on this farm. <laughs> A totally different story. Well, we'll have to get into that one sometime. I'm, I'm uh, it's interesting to do that you're the 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 farm element because I use that when I talk. I use the the nature concept of plant a seed, nurture a plant, harvest the fruit. The leads are the seeds. You go find those things when you're networking and all this. And it's the relationship that takes all the time, and the fruit will fall fall off the vine if you got a good tight relationship and you're an influencer. Then they'll come and buy your stuff. Or by your recommendations. So can I elaborate on that a little bit? Please as a, do. As you know these things. You're older than I am. So, so we farm 600 acres. We're not big farmers or anything like that. We milk, I think, maybe 120 cows or something. More and, than I got. Huh? More than I got. Yeah. More than I got. <laughs> there, there, yeah, sometimes when they get out, I'll take a picture of them and I call them Minnesota for lawnmower, you know, <laughs> or my living lawn ornaments as they're walking through the lawn. Not only are they eating the grass, but they're fertilizing it at the same time. But um, so, so one of the things is that in, you know, when you're just getting started, you go out and you plant the seeds and you nurture the seed. These are the people you're talking to and you're trying to get things going. You're trying to figure out your brand and your message and what did, you know, how, how to put it into words, what you actually do. But when you become an influencer, it's like having a herd of cows. So I could go out and I could just, I could be like a lot of other farmers and make my cows stay in this little, in this little pasture or in this little, um, corral and I go out and get all of the feed for them and bring it to them. Or I could open up the fences and I could rotate them through so that they're going out and eating the feed. And then what happens, they come back in and all of a sudden when they get milked, they're giving me all the results. And I didn't have to do the work for it outside of making sure the fence was good. And that's what that's what being an influencer is, is once you get kind of that influencer status and you have the those group of people that you've already gotten some results for, and it only has to be two or three people who give you great testimonials, even if you do even if you work with them for free as you're trying to build this to get the testimonials, now all of a sudden you start putting that information out and that social proof and you've got these people who are marketing for you and they're telling people about you because they want, because they're so excited about what happened and they want to help you grow your business. That's like having a herd of cows coming in, dropping milk all the time, which you sell for money right off the bat. 
There you go. So you go to your networking event, you're looking for cows. <laughs> yeah. But I wouldn't tell people that because they would probably get a little offended at that. They might. They might. <laughs> But we'll get over it. Yeah. Well, Sue, I keep these kind of close so people can be able to consume them all. We're at about 20 minutes already. So I want to put your little uh, connection on there, how they can get a hold of you, just like that. Perfect. And is there anything that you want to sign off with and tell us about? Do you got any, like, uh, can we get access to that book or you got some kind of little cheat sheet? If, if you go to, the, I what I'd prefer that you do, I mean, the book is really great. You can go to Amazon, search for The Success Rituals. And um, it was just released last weekend. It's got, if you look at my website, it's got some really, it's got a cover of it, but social media, my if you go to Sue, Sue Henry Talks forward slash influencer on social media, on Facebook, I've also got tons of pictures of the book and everything, interviews with the uh, some of the other authors and everything like that. I think if there's anything I would like to leave with people, it's it's this. There are three pure colors, but look what Michelangelo created with them. There are 10 mathematical digits. And look what Einstein discovered and we have as a result of what he started. There are seven musical notes. And look what Beethoven, Mozart, Lady Gaga has created as a result. You, my friend, have everything you need inside of you to have all of your dreams and goals come true, to have the lifestyle you dream of. You just have to open up and let it flow and it, it will come. That's a good message. Message. It's about being just the simplicity, just the basics. Yep. And it's all there for you. That's always fascinated me with this whole computer thing. It's a bunch of ones and zeros. That's all it really is. And look at what happens. Really. Yeah. Yeah. It really, it really is. Yeah. Well, Sue, I appreciate you taking the time. If you want to stick around um, and we can have a little chat. Other than that, I'm going to close this off and we'll uh, move on. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thanks. I hope to hear from your listeners. It'll be fun. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that was Sue Henry. And I'm going to sign us off. If you would, uh, when you when it's up on YouTube, if you could maybe make a comment or subscribe to my channel, perhaps. And I want you to be safe, be kind, be nice, be friendly, and be healthy. Okay. Peace, love, and happiness. This is Magic Brad signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be well. Bye. <laughs>